How do you get shocked? So how do we get shocked as electricians? In my last video, I talked a little bit about uh, how to get shocked, really not as like promoting how to get shocked, but uh, I've worked with people in the past and I work with some people that still don't really understand, so they're terrified of electricity. And it's like at a certain point of doing this for a certain amount of years, you gotta understand how this stuff works. Otherwise, working on anything that you might think's off and you don't realize there's something else hooked to it that is on, there's a lot of different ways that you can get electrocuted. So you really need to understand so that you can have confidence when you're working, but also so that you're safe, you don't hurt yourself and you don't hurt anybody else. So I figured some of you are probably like me where you're a little bit more visual. So to understand this, I figured I would break this down visually on the old board. So that you understand how electricity like flows in general. Let's say that this is a transformer out at the utility. Like this is up on some pole. Um, it could be like a pad mounted transformer. It could be anything, but understand that all we have inside of there is a coil of wire. It is one piece of wire. This is the secondary side. You're gonna have a primary side that comes in. Um, we'll denote that like that. So there's technically two pieces of wire, but there's a primary circuit that goes back to the utility company where it's just one loop of wire. That's it, just one circuit. And then on our secondary side that goes over to our house, this is a complete circuit. It goes all the way through here over to your meter through your electrical system and back over here. So you have one, essentially one big loop of wire at 240 volts. And then we put a neutral in there too at the halfway point to signify our, our uh, 120 volt circuits. So to understand, we have a source. So let me rename this secondary, we'll say source. Current is always gonna travel from source through a circuit all the way back to source. So let's say we've got a load over here and we'll do a, like an easy load. We'll say that it's a light bulb. You got the little like filament inside of that. The bottom and the screw shell are our two places that we are introducing this light bulb filament into the circuit. So current's gonna go through the neutral shell, through the filament, out to the hot. It's gonna go back and forth, obviously alternating current. But from here, all the way through the bulb, back to here, you have another loop. Because a, a light bulb filament just looks like this. It's just a wound, tiny little wire that has a certain amount of impedance. And so when we say that we're hooking up a load, all we're saying is that we're hooking up a certain amount of impedance. And we're short circuiting, you can kind of think of it as like hooking up to hot and hot or hot and neutral. Like we would short circuit a circuit and you'd see like that massive explosion happen. Um, with a load, you actually have enough resistance or enough impedance or reactance. We can get more into that whole deba uh, debacle later. But you have a certain amount of impedance which is gonna slow that current flow down and it's gonna make that load do something. It's gonna react in some way. So loads are usually either um, heat, you're getting a byproduct of heat off of making a coil like this and hooking it up to two wires, or you're getting motion, you might have a motor that you're getting to spin, um, or you have a light so it's actually putting enough current through something that it's emitting light out of it and that's the wanted result of it, like a light bulb. Or you got things like vibration that you're trying to get out of it, like sound. We might have a speaker that we're hooking up. But those are what we're doing. We're taking a certain amount of conductor, we're wrapping it around something and trying to get, because we're wrapping it, we're trying to get current to slow down in a certain way. So we're hooking up a load to it. Without a load, current's just gonna wanna go infinitely fast. It's gonna put so much current through at such a quick uh, point in time that it can be explosive. It can be really, really dangerous. So the way we use electricity is that we take a load and we wrap it with a whole bunch of wire so that there's a resistance inside of it. Or if we have a motor, essentially we're doing the same thing. It just works a little bit differently. Um, but we're taking enough impedance that we're touching those wires and something responsible and useful is happening with it. But if we took our bodies and introduced our bodies into the circuit, we don't have enough impedance for us to like start glowing or doing anything of like value. We have enough impedance to die. We have enough impedance to die. And it's really, really um, important that you understand how introducing yourself into a circuit works. So let's break into it a little bit. Say that we've got, um, 
I'm gonna do hot and neutral because that's kind of how we work out in the field. So a neutral really is just another conductor that's tapped in the halfway point. So we've got between hot and hot, we've got uh, 240 volts between here and here, which also means that we have 120 volts between here and here, and we have 120 volts between here and here. All that means is that there's this miniature circuit within the larger 240 volt circuit throughout the whole house that operates at half the amount of pressure. So we don't need as much pressure to turn on a light bulb so we don't run 240 volts to it. We only need 120 volts, so it's a lesser, it's a way to split that pressure and get uh, two different circuits or two different types of um, a lesser pressure. And then we try to load things up evenly, obviously, so we balance everything out. So we'll get into the whole does neutral, how neutrals work and current on a neutral and all that in a later video. I've actually got several videos like that. Just check the channel. Um, but so how a circuit's gonna work, we've got a complete circuit, right? We have a path here where current can flow through this. When, once we complete that circuit, the light bulb's just gonna turn on, right? Current's gonna start flowing. But if we take and we break that circuit, the light's gonna turn off. So if we were to open this circuit, say we've got like a switch, we open it and then that light turns off. But what if we were to put our hands in between here? If I were to touch right here and right here, now current has a path to go from here through my hand, through my body to this other lead and I'm completing the circuit. So even though that switch is open, if I touch these terminals, current's gonna go through me and that light bulb is going to light. It's actually me completing the circuit. This is in series, right? So power is coming in along the same path I'm introducing myself. I could take a, a pencil or I could take anything that's conductive, right? Like a lead pencil, lead inside of it, as long as it's touching on both ends. Um, I could take a piece of copper wire. I could take my finger, anything that's conductive, I could take and touch that together and I'd get that light bulb to turn on while at the same time hurting the shit out of myself. So don't do this, don't go up and start touching wires. It will happen, you will turn something on. Now it depends on the load, depends on the pressure, the amount of voltage and all that, whether or not you're actually gonna get the light bulb to turn on, but I, trust me in this, you don't wanna go out there and start messing with this stuff and trying to touch things and try to get light bulbs to come on. It's, I take this seriously, that's not funny and I'm not recommending anybody go out and do this, but I'm telling you theoretically how this would work if you did introduce yourself. So if you introduce yourself, depending on the voltage, right, the pressure, if you have a whole lot of pressure and you were to maybe touch your finger between these two things, current's gonna go through here. And from the point it touches to the point it touches, current's gonna travel through that point. So if you don't offer very much resistance, which your finger doesn't offer very much resistance, there's gonna be a lot of current that goes through your finger. If you're wet, your, your skin is like saturated with moisture, there's even less resistance. It's gonna, tr more, more current can travel faster through that situation. If you have like a, a, something that's a little bit more like an insulator, like a piece of wood, wood's not conductive. So you could put wood between there and nothing's gonna happen. So we're just changing the amount of resistance. So if you offer a whole bunch of resistance, the light bulb's not gonna turn on, not much current's gonna go through you. But again, if you just, put any kind of conductor in there through a series or in series, you know, in, in line, uh, you will get shocked. So getting shocked between here and here is a much better scenario, right? You're just hurting your finger for a little while. It might like, it might feel kind of raw getting 120 volts or 240 volts struck through your finger, but that's something like you could potentially walk away from. It might create a line down your finger. I've had that happen before where I got shocked 277 between my finger uh, fingertip and like my, uh, the meat of my arm down by my elbow. And I had this long red line that went all the way through because current just found this path and it rearranged my molecules that it left a line and it was bruised and it was really sore for a long time. But that was a lot better in that situation that the current went from here to here and didn't go from here through my heart because that's the problem. Once you start introducing current through your heart, you can actually create your, uh, a situation where you have a heart attack. You could 
really severely like blow out your heart and be killed instantaneously. You could just get enough current that goes through your heart that it causes an erratic heartbeat. So you kind of stop the timing um, or you like shock yourself so that your heart goes like uh, irrhythmic, irrhythmic? Not, not to the same rhythm that it's supposed to be. So you can create all kinds of heart problems. It's really, really dangerous. So you don't ever wanna get shocked between your two hands. So that's one way that we get shocked, right? But it is between one thing and one other thing. There's no way that I could stand here, especially with rubber boots on that are rated for electrical insulation, for me to touch this and current go through my body. It won't flow at all. There's no path for it to flow, but the only way that current flows is through a completed circuit. So you have to introduce yourself at two points. The reason that you would take a multimeter, right? If you take a multimeter and you put your black lead right here and you don't take your red lead and do anything with your red lead, you're gonna hold that multimeter in your hand and it's gonna just show zero. There's no voltage, there's no pressure, and there's no current flowing through that meter because you don't have a complete circuit to allow current to flow through that. So when we take our red lead and hook it up, the current goes through the meter, you know, through everything inside of there, and it allows current to flow through it. So between two points, that's always really important to understand. Now, what is a series shock? Series is when you're going between the hot and the neutral, or say maybe the hot and the, the uh, hot and other hot. I probably should have drawn this one red, just so it's like easier for you to conceptualize. It's all one big wire. Anyway, so a, ser a parallel shock means that you're interrupting that circuit and becoming the load, and there's no other load down the line. So you're not getting shocked from this to, you know, like another point on that. You're getting shocked between these two hots. So it's literally from source through you back to source or same thing with a neutral, you know, hot and neutral. You are the only resistance that is in this circuit. So it's a lot, uh, it's still a very dangerous situation, right? Because current is always going to want to run unimpeded to the speed of light as fast as those charges can move through that. Adding resistance slows everything down and it limits the amount of current that can flow through anything. So if you're the only thing offering with your nice hands. <laughs> there's your legs. If you're the only thing trying to hold that, that uh, current, there's not much resistance to go through it. So it can be really bad. You can get electrocuted. And again, shock and electrocution are different. Shock just means you've introduced yourself to a circuit. Electrocution means that you've suffered severe bodily injury or death. Most people are talking about death when they say electrocution, but um, it's very dangerous to introduce yourself into an electrical circuit. But what I want to point out, again, for those of you that are terrified and don't understand how current travels, it's always between two points. You can't make a complete circuit through your body without there being a complete circuit, two paths, two, two things. In this same situation, I could sit here all day and, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Red Guy could just touch this wire and his other hand could be over here. And now there's no, there's no path, right? Like current would try to go through here, but it has nowhere to go. So the only way that current can travel is if he goes and touches something to complete that circuit to allow it to flow through their body. So I hope that helped. Um, if you wanna watch the original video and you didn't see the first video, check this video out right here. If you're a little bit more interested to understand some of electrical theory and understand like what voltage is, check this video out, it's pretty rad. Love you crazy people and I'll see you in the next one.